Hi, John. Thank you so much for joining us today. If it's, oh, I'm sorry, Jana from Whiskey and Sunshine. She already said my outlet. I was like, oh. Um, You're doing great, Jana. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if is such an inspirational and beautiful story. Where did the idea of the ifs come from? And were any of them inspired by real life ifs? Yes, good question. Um, the ifs came, I, I created them all when I was writing the script. Um, it started with Blue. I wrote the um, character of Blue for Steve. And as I was writing for Steve, I sort of imagined what that would look like with his voice. And then I did the same for Phoebe and for Lewis. And then a bunch of the other ifs as we kept going, um, I was, I'm a terrible artist, but I was sketching down all these little drawings and thinking of uh, what we could do with them and who would play them. And every time I thought of who would play them, I tried to maneuver what they looked like because of that. But no, the two, probably the two most special ifs are my daughter's imaginary friends. So one of my daughter's imaginary friends is the pink alligator named Allie. Um, and I always love the stories of where everyone's imaginary friend comes from. So my daughter had this alligator living under her bed, still does. And I said, is that scary? And she said, no, she's there to eat any of the bad guys coming to get me. And I went, great, logical. And then my other daughter created the um, flaming marshmallow because she's a very empathetic person. And we were making s'mores one day and her marshmallow burst into flames and she was destroyed. And I said, oh, no, no, that's what he does. He lights himself on fire. He puts himself out. And she went, really? And I went, oh, yeah, it's just his thing. And she was like, great. And that became her imaginary friend. I love it. Thank you. Of course. Ashley, you have the next question. Hi, John. I'm Ashley from With Ashley & Co. Hey, Ashley. And I love the film. You made me cry. You made my son cry. Oh, my <laughs> so God. Yes. That's the best compliment that. ever. Thank you. In a good way. That's a good cry. <laughs> yes. Yes. He loved it. Uh, so, yes. So, you mentioned Steve. Reuniting with him. So, you have so much history there. And there's so much potential for so many funny moments. What was it like? directing him again after all these years and bringing Blue to life? Well, Steve is sort of undirectable. He's so good that you just sort of let him do whatever he does and hope that the microphones and cameras are rolling. Um, I don't know how much direction I gave him, but it was so much fun working with him. I will say I hadn't seen him in so long because of the pandemic. And um, when he came in, I was expecting just nonstop hilarity to ensue. And instead, he came over, put his hands on my shoulder and gave the greatest brother speech of all time where he said how proud he was of me. He said he loved the script and he said he's been watching ever since The Office, the fact that I went on to start writing and directing. He said he was so moved by it, inspired by it. And then he was really proud of me and gave me a hug. So I started the thing weeping. And then we ended the day laughing as soon as he started doing Blue. But that man is special on every level. I love that. Thank you. Amanda, you have the next question. Hi, I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms, and I loved it also. It was, Thank you. It didn't make my husband cry, but I cried. <laughs> we'll get him next time. We'll get him next uh, time. Yes. <laughs> well, moving on, you talked about, you know, working with Steve. I would like to know what it was like working with the late and great Louis Gossett Jr. Thank, oh, my God. So I was the biggest fan of Lou Gossett Jr.'s growing up. Um, in all the movies I saw him, he was so stoic, so heroic, and yet so vulnerable. He was such a presence, and it was sort of this perfect iteration of a human being and an amalgam of a man. And so I've always loved him, and I wrote the part for him, not knowing that he would say yes. Not only did he say yes, but one of the craziest experiences in my career as a director happened where he hadn't read the script. I always like to call my actors before they read the script, just so they can get a sense of what the heck I'm talking about. And um, he was, we were talking and I said, so you'll be the head imaginary friend. I know this sounds crazy, but they live under Coney Island and blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh yeah, and the boardwalk. And I said, exactly. And then I went, what? And cause he hadn't read the script. And he said, yeah, the boardwalk. Uh, and I said, how do you know that? And he said, I grew up in Coney Island. And I said, really? And he starts telling a story about his dad taking him to the boardwalk, the music that was in the air, the smells of all the stalls. And I went, Lou, oh my God, I wrote a monologue, almost exactly what you're saying. And he went, great, then let's get to work. And that's how we started and jumped into work with each other. So it was a very moving thing to have him bring not only this incredible voice and this personality, but he brought his history mm -hmm. to this character. And you can totally tell in the scenes, it's so moving. I'm, I'm so honored that I got to work with him. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely. Victor, you're next. Hi, John. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, my name is Victor. I'm, I'm from Fan Dads. Um, fan Dads. During the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, you've heard of Fan Boys before? 
What's that? that? Now we have children, so we're fan dads. I love it. Uh, during that pandemic, you came out with some good news, and that just every one of those episodes made us feel really good. I feel like if is an extension of that. So thank you very much for putting this out there. Oh my God, thank you. That's exactly, that was what I was going for. So you nailed it. Awesome, thank you. Uh, my daughter and I saw it, we were crying the whole time. Uh, but I do want to ask you about one character that I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to spoil it. I want people to watch the movie to f- see this character. But the character of Keith, how did you pitch this idea to the actor that's playing Keith? And what was their reaction when you told them how they were going to look? Uh, the lid has been ripped off, so we can talk about it. Mr. Brad Pitt plays Keith, um, and he's an up-and-comer that I really, I imagine good things for, and I just feel great that I was able to give him his first job. Um, so I wrote the part of Keith, and it, it made me laugh writing the script, how often Keith came back. And then I will say it was Ryan, um, you know, you talk about your inner child, and you realize that directing Ryan in this movie was like directing Ryan's inner child, he got it immediately. I mean, I was saying this hallway won't be this hallway. It'll transform and it'll become this little girl's imagination. And then you're going to trip over this invisible if who's not really there. And he just went, okay. And that first take of him falling is the first take. And I've never seen a fall harder than that on camera. And he just committed to it. And when I saw that, I said, oh, I think Keith might be a fan favorite. So I reached out to Brad and I said, I know this sounds insane. I'm doing a movie about imaginary friends. We have a bunch of people doing it, but I would really like you to play this imagine, this invisible if. And he said yes so fast. And he said, I would love to do it. The movie sounds great. And also putting good out into the world is the most important thing right now. So happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nicole, you're next. Hi, John. Good morning. Morning. I'm Nicole Mushi with Multicultural Maven. Um, love the film. Watch it with my two boys. Um, have to say, I think every grown person in the theater was crying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was amazing. Thank um, you. But uh, my question is, um, when we look at Calvin's character, it's so developed and such a huge part of the film Um, what was that conversation like talking with Ryan to be like, Hey, you know, I want you to pay Calvin and, you know, do all this stuff. It's amazing. Um, first of all, Ryan is, uh, I've been a fan of his forever. I remember watching two guys, a girl in a pizza place and thinking not only, uh, who is that, but what is that? Like, what kind of comedy is that? It was just so I'd never seen it. Still haven't seen anything like it since. And so I've been a big fan of his forever. I got lucky enough to be introduced to him and we became friendly a few years back and we talked about always working together. And I said, I, I said, I kind of want to do something with imaginary friends. And he said, Oh, that sounds fun. If you figure out what you want to do with it, just let me know. And then over the pandemic, it was, I knew the imaginary friend world would feel like a good world to play in, but I didn't want it to just be silly. I wanted it to have an emotional undercurrent. And I'm sure I, you've heard, but during the pandemic, it was when I saw my daughter starting to play fewer and fewer imaginary games their light started to go out and they started asking big questions and they let the real world in. And I said, oh my God, this is the definition of growing up. This is what the movie should be about, that you don't ever have to choose between growing up and leaving your childhood behind, bring your childhood with you through life. And so I pitched him that version and I started to pitch him this version of, uh, you know, Kaylee's character and going through something. And he was so unbelievably kind about it. I think he, he says it was the fastest yes he's ever given in his career because And then he said it wasn't even um, vocal. It wasn't a word. He just went, (gasps) and that was his yes. And so I think being a dad of his kids and knowing my kids, he thought that this movie would be an important one to be a part of. And I will say that for me, as funny as Ryan is, getting to see him as a dad and as a husband and as a friend, I get to see this emotional well, this huge hearted person. And I thought if I could capture a fraction of that and put it on camera, we'd be off to the races. And he gave me more than I could ever imagine. He's so unbelievably good in this movie and so vulnerable and so sweet and so funny, but he brings a whole nother side that, um, you know, I hadn't seen since Gene Wilder and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, we'll have the Patrizias. Hi, I'm Kennedy and I'm from the Patricias. We saw the movie on Saturday and we loved it. Thank you. Um, (laughs) <laughs> um, my question is, have your girls seen the movie yet? And if so, what did they think? First of all, it's the best question. It's the scariest question. They just saw it two days ago. And I'll be honest with you. 
I don't really read reviews because I get too scared. I have never been more scared of two reviews in my life. And I got two little thumbs up and it was the greatest review I'll ever get in my career. It, they loved it and they were so um, sweet about it. They were so moved by it. And we talked about it as a family the next day and we're still talking about it. And honestly, it's, it's probably the greatest moment of my career. I don't know how it gets better than this to have them be a part of this movie with me. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, you have the next question. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Oh my God. Thank you guys for doing this. Thank you. My name is Kathy. I'm with Live with Kathy. And I want to know this project was absolutely gorgeous. I, Thank you. I cannot say enough about it. So I wanted to know what was your favorite part about being involved in a project that celebrates the power of a child's imagination? Wow. That's a great question. I, I got to say, I like I said, I didn't know where to go. But I used to stand in doorways for hours watching my girls disappear into this magical world that we all as parents know that we're not invited to. And it wasn't just the joy on their face and the happiness that they had. It was how authentic they were as people. They were fearless. They could do anything, be anything, dress up as anything. And there was something amazing about that. So to get to go to work every day and try to recreate that was genius. I would say that my, the most emotional thing for me was watching Kaylee. Um, she's not only one of the best actors I've ever seen, she is one of the most unbelievable humans. And she brought so much to this movie, not only in her performance, but she, she, in my opinion, pulls off a magic trick, which is very few movies do one of the lead characters, are, are they you? You know, they represent you. And I think that Kaylee does the impossible, which is she represents everyone in the audience. She represents kids because they want to be in that world of imaginary friends with her. But she is for adults, she's the invite back. She's the invitation to go back and say, I'm going through this question of whether or not I should grow up. You should be going through that question of growing up. So she pulled the impossible. So watching her every day, not only was I very moved and my script was coming to life in a way that I hadn't even anticipated, but I watched the crew. I mean, we are all very lucky to still be in the world of pretend in this business. But I watched full grown people go home every day with a skip in their step because they saw how much fun she was having. And it reminded all of us that even in this business, we have to take stock of how lucky we are. And we just, it was amazing to watch people literally whistling as they went off set because of her. She was, she's the magic of this movie. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And Tegan, you'll have our last question. Hi, I'm Tegan from That Said LA, and I'm an aspiring filmmaker and a huge fan, so it's such an honor to meet you. Oh, Tegan, it's nice to meet you. Um, so a, a director's job is to bring the film to life. So what was it like playing so many different roles in this film with acting and directing and writing? What was it like balancing everything? It's a very good question. I, I wish I could say it was difficult, but I think at some point... Um, this is the most personal movie I'll ever make. I know that because it's with my kids and for my kids and um, I couldn't get this one wrong. So not that I want to get any movie wrong, but I really couldn't get this one wrong. So when I started involving myself in, you know, acting in the movie, I wasn't even sure I was going to act in the movie. And then I thought I'll probably, it would be better if I acted in the movie so I don't annoy the other actor who would play and go, no, I, what I meant was, no, please don't. And when I'm with my kids, I, I just didn't want to annoy them. And then everything else was, you just got to bring this to what you said, you got to bring this world to life every single day. And so we had puppets and stuffed animals all around the set so that nobody had to act with a tennis ball or a piece of tape. So I would reenact the, I would pretend to be the characters probably more than the actors needed me to because I was really having fun. Um, but one of my favorite days of puppeting the characters was um, Cosmo was my favorite to puppet because I got to attack Ryan with a doll. Who gets to say they get to attack Ryan Reynolds with a doll? And I got uh, really into it. And one day, the greatest text of the whole experience was Ryan wrote me a text saying, I love what a menace you are when you're Cosmo. <laughs> and I thought, I got called a menace. That's what we all aspire to have in your career at some point. It was just really, really fun. So to your point, bringing it to life, it was almost easier to do more and more stuff because I was in 150% because I had my girls trust in me and I had to do it right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck with everything. And that is all the time we have for the roundtable today. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Please say your goodbyes and leave the meeting. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.